What's up Fallen Angels? Welcome to the first video of this channel. Uh, we are here to talk about many different kinds of metal. Uh, we're here to rank bands discographies, uh, discuss our opinion without too much judgment, and uh, just basically here to have a good time and enjoy some good music together. I decided to break the ice. I was going to use my favorite band as a first video on this channel. Also, I know the energy is not too high right now. I'm sick. I apologize for that. But if you guys want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button straight off the bat. Today, we're going to be ranking Avenged Sevenfold's entire discography from worst to best, in my personal opinion. I want to see your guys' lists in the comments down below if you guys want to join in on this because um, I know for sure that everybody's varies and I see that in other videos as well. Um, I wanted to wait and make this video, but you know, it's it's been almost six years since their last album came out and I think it'll be six years here in a couple weeks but I know that their next album isn't coming out till next year anyway. So um, this is, again, my personal opinion. Don't shit on me too much for this. Uh, I want to know your guys' opinions as well, where you guys stand on Avenged Sevenfold's albums. But yeah, let's just jump straight into this, I guess. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm just going to go into a very controversial topic, the stage. That is my number eight. Um, it is their most recent studio album, and to me, it is just their... I don't know. It's kind of... It's just at the bottom of the list for me. Um, not that it's a bad album. In my opinion, it's not super great from a discography standpoint, like it just doesn't fit with the rest of their albums. And you know, a lot of bands take directions that I do actually like seeing them go in different directions. But this is, this is one of those albums where it just hits me in a different way. And I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, there are some really good songs on this album. The stage itself has an incredible message behind it. Uh, title track, the opening track. If you watch the music video of that, it's actually very um, I get lost in it, <clears throat> but, uh, Goddamn is pretty good, Paradigm's alright, um, and Exist is one hell of a track, I don't know, it's just, to me, it's, I don't know, I don't think it's their best sound, but going into that, let's take a look at number seven. So number seven for me is Hail to the King, their second most recent album. To me, those two albums are kind of almost in the same spot for me. I know Hail to the King is actually better than the stage, in my opinion. Uh, there's a few really good tracks, like Hail to the King itself and uh, Requiem, Crimson Day, and coming home. I'd say those are my favorite tracks on that album. It's a very vanilla sound from what we're used to from Avenged Sevenfold, I guess. There was a lot more creativity, I would say. Um, I've heard my father touch on this a lot of times. There was a lot more creativity in the group when the Rev was around. I actually tend to agree with that statement. I think that things were more diverse, but in their own way. Like, every album by Avenged Sevenfold is so different from one another, and I like that. But it's all good, in a way. But Hail to the King, I felt like it was just extremely vanilla, and This Means War was kind of like a sad but true 2.0. So, yeah. Let's move into number six. Okay, so number six, and some of you were probably going to be like, how the fuck did you put this above Hail to the King and the stage? Sounding the Seventh Trumpet, that one hits pretty hard at home for me. Um, I've definitely always loved this style of metal. Granted, there's no other album really like Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. It's very interesting. It's very sloppy, and there are some albums that are sloppy, and I hate it, but this is one of those albums that's like really sloppy, and I like it. Uh... 
I don't know. I think it's a really good first album for a band of this nature. The album art's pretty cool, too. I definitely find myself getting lost in this album when I revisit it. Um, I know a lot of people hate this album. They think that there's nothing there for them, really. But for me, there actually is something there, and I truly do enjoy listening to Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. Uh, I started listening to Sounding the Seventh Trumpet when I was going through some really dark times in my life, specifically my freshman year, and it has stuck with me ever since. It's a really good album to me. I know it's, like I said, it's sloppy. I know The Rev did his one take where he did the entire album in one take and there were some fuck ups at the end but <coughs> overall i still think it's a pretty good album uh it's different for sure like i said there's there's never really been another album exactly like that but still it's not bad so let's move into number five All right, so coming in at number five for me is Diamonds in the Rough. Still, to this day, a lot of Avenged Sevenfold fans do not acknowledge this album. They do not know of this album. And I don't know, I find that weird. Because it's there with the rest of them. Granted, I don't know if this one was studio or not. I don't think it was. It came out with their 2008 live show, Live in the LBC. But Diamonds in the Rough is actually a pretty good album. I wanted to put this higher because along with Sounding the Seventh Trumpet, this album got me through some really rough times. And I can literally take a part of my life and relate it to each fucking song in this album. Really good album. Uh, very underrated, extremely underrated. Again, I wish I could have put it above five, but still, there are just some really good Event Sevenfold albums that are above this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say about that album. If you don't know of that album, go ahead and take a look at it. Diamonds in the Rough, 2008. Uh, which brings us to number four. So coming in at number four for me is Waking the Fallen, 2003. I think this album has an incredible sound compared to Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. I think it is a more refound or is that even a word? Maybe. <laughs> I think it's a more organized sounding the seventh trumpet with definitely some better elements thrown in there. I mean, looking back on sounding the seventh trumpet, I don't think there were any duels, any dual guitars. No, there was a little bit, but not too much. This album is a great example of Avenged Sevenfold Duels coming into, like, play in an amazing way. I love Waking the Fallen. I think it's a great album. And I know that they definitely had some help with that one because Sounding the Seventh Trumpet, they did it with, like, $2,000, and they did it pretty much just... It was their garage days, basically. But Waking the Fallen was definitely a more refined sound when it came to their screaming days. Uh, but shying away from the screaming days. Actually, wait a second. Let me let me touch on something really quick. They were going through some member changes at the time as well. Sinister Gates was not actually the guitar player for Sounding the Seventh Trumpet. Um, if I recall. And then there was Just Insane and Matt Went and yeah, a lot of lineup changes in those first few years. But uh, yeah, that was the last album they had for their Screaming Days, two albums. But going away from the Screaming Days uh, takes you to my number third spot. So what my number three spot, if I can English. So let's jump into that. Coming in at number three for me is City of Evil. This was the first album that they did pretty much all by themselves. And they came to the guys with this album and said, here, here it is. We did it. Uh, obviously, there were some strings in this album. I think City of Evil definitely, it's organized in a sloppy way. I like how every song is a little bit different. 
I definitely like the style of this album. A lot of people think the album art is ugly. I think it's great. Um, all in all, very interesting album. Again, you just don't hear this kind of metal slash hard rock from anyone else. Like, Avenged Sevenfold, in each of their albums, has created their own kind of style of hard rock and heavy metal. That's what I've always liked about this group. But City of Evil is definitely an interesting album, for sure. It's, it's a long one, but it's good. So, yeah. Awkward silence. Good stuff. Number two. <laughs> number one and number two were really fucking hard for me. I truthfully could not choose between these two for the longest time. And then I started listening to both more and more frequently lately. And I decided that number two comes in as Nightmare. So, I think... Nightmare is an incredible album. I know that a lot of it is based around the Rev and the loss that they were going through at the time. But I think that, you know, in a in a not very fucked up way, I don't mean like, oh yeah, his death made the band great for that album. No, that's not what I'm getting at. I'm saying that loss really inspired some deep emotional writing when it came to this record and i think that it turned out amazing <clears throat> and i think that it was a damn shame that he had to lose his life so early because i think they could have done so much more with their later records um all in all just a great album i like how the tone kind of slows down in the second half definitely calms down a little bit Yeah. I don't know why there was such a long pause there. I was just thinking about music. Sorry about that. Coming in at number one, I would have to say, is definitely their self-titled. Hands down. Um, I don't know. It's just so great. There is a little bit of everything in that album. Like... I've heard so many songs from that album hit the radio. Like, I've heard Critical Acclaim on the radio. I've heard Almost Easy, Scream, Afterlife. Yeah, those are the main four that hit the radio. But I think every song in that album is just fucking incredible. Uh, even down to auto-tune. You know, a lot of people hated that, but I think it, it worked. And somehow they just made it work. But I think Avenged Sevenfold, their self-titled album, I think it's just organized in an incredible way. And I like that they stepped out of their comfort zone and, you know, they tried country and then shit like a little piece of heaven. There will never be another. Absolutely fucking incredible. So that's where I stand on Avenged Sevenfold's discography. Let me know what your guys' list is. That's just my personal opinion. Again, we're just here to have a good time and exchange our views. So yeah, let me hear what you guys think down in the comments. And I am definitely interested to hear what you guys have to say about this group. Um, Event Sunfold has definitely changed a lot over time. We'll probably do an album review on their new album whenever it comes out. So we're going to have to check that out. Uh, until then, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys come back for some videos in the future. We can do reviews. We can do top tens. We can do discography rankings. We can do a lot of different things with this channel. So leave your suggestions down below, what you want to see, a band you might want me to listen to, what you want me to do with that band, and let's turn this into something. I'll see you guys in the next one.